delve into the legacy of a pivotal and contentious figure who forever altered the course of history. This titan ended over 4,000 years of Chinese imperial rule, ushering in a dictatorial communist regime that still impacts the world's largest population. His bold actions and controversial legacy have cemented his status as a legendary figure whose story of power, transformation, and innovation captivates and challenges to this day. The life of Mao Zedong, a man of humble beginnings, is a testament to the power of perseverance and strategic vision. Born into a peasant family in Hunan province, Mao's early life was marked by struggles and hardships. His father was a hard-working farmer and his mother a devout Buddhist. Aside from rising to power in the prolonged Chinese Civil War, his major initiatives, the Great Leap Forward and the Cultural Revolution, resulted in catastrophic failures, causing economic devastation and the deaths of tens of millions. Dive into the Cultural Revolution, 1966 to 1976, a period marked by extreme political and ideological fervor. In this era, simple pleasures like playing chess and listening to classical music were banned, showcasing the intense control exerted over daily life in China. This chapter of history vividly illustrates the extraordinary impact of political zeal mixed with power. Explore the tumultuous Chinese revolution under Mao, delving into his notorious excesses and their profound impact on China. Before diving in, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications to stay updated with our channel's thrilling content. Prepare for a riveting journey through history that promises to captivate and enlighten. Discover the profound impact of Mao's Little Red Book and the revolution it fueled, transforming China. Though not as globally renowned as Lenin's revolution, Mao's campaign was a pivotal moment, birthing a unique mix of political tyranny and capitalist dynamism that defines China today. Explore the complex legacy of a dictator whose actions reshaped a nation, resulting in a story of power, tragedy, and enduring governance. Mao revolutionized the art of leadership, bypassing the need for a fearsome political police like those in Russia. Instead, he ingeniously turned his communist supporters into a network of ideological enforcers, blending societal fabric with loyalty and oversight. This approach crafted a distinct narrative of power showcasing Mao's strategy of governance through the empowerment of the populace as both judges and police of ideology. Explore the dynamic history of China under Mao, where chaos and turbulence were the norms. Intriguingly, while the Chinese revolution is largely forgotten today, it once took the world by storm, becoming a viral sensation in the 1970s. This journey into the past reveals a story of contrasts, from obscurity to worldwide fascination the Chinese Revolution, particularly the Cultural Revolution, sparked a global wave of sympathy in the 1970s among many European and Latin American communist parties. This surge of solidarity, however, did not extend to the non-communist left and other political and social sectors, marking a fascinating chapter of ideological affinity and division on the world stage. Thus began a new era, rooted in the vision of a man who would forever alter the course of history. But what consequences did Mao's ambitious initiatives bring for his people? This question leads us to the Great Leap Forward, a period marked by high hopes, but ultimately tragic outcomes. In the late 1950s, Mao initiated the ambitious Great Leap Forward, aiming to transition China from a primarily agrarian economy to an industrial powerhouse. However, this grand plan resulted in a catastrophic disaster. During the Great Leap Forward, private agriculture was banned and popular communes were established, reshaping China's political landscape. Additionally, the walking on two legs policy aimed to integrate small and medium-sized industrial ventures with large industries, moving away from the Soviet model. The frenzy of small industrial ventures, especially in metallurgy, reflected a lack of concern for scale and a reluctance to contradict Mao, seen as almost godlike. Mao's fixation on steel production stemmed from his dream of elevating China to global prominence in the industry. Mao urged the untrained peasantry to build blast furnaces and surrender their metal belongings, like old kitchen and farming tools, as part of the national endeavor to produce steel. It appeared remarkably naive to expect food abundance simply because it was available for free in party canteens and dining halls. The collapse of agricultural and livestock production led to food shortages, 
resulting in a colossal famine that claimed 30 million lives. Within three years of the Great Leap Forward's inception, it had tragically transformed into a disastrous Great Leap Backward. The failure of the Great Leap Forward tarnished Mao's reputation, relegating him to secondary roles despite his historical leadership. From political fervor to ideological control, what marked the Cultural Revolution under Mao? Mao's rise to power is marked by many incredible events, with the Cultural Revolution, 1966 to 1976, standing out as his strategic return to political dominance after the Great Leap Forward setback. This period highlights Mao's resilience and ability to reclaim leadership, creating a memorable chapter in history. Embark on an exploration of one of history's most staggering social experiments, a revolution within a revolution that resulted in the ideological persecution of over 100 million people and the deaths of approximately 20 million Dave. This event stands as a monumental testament to the extremes of ambition and the profound impacts of political upheaval. The true death toll of the Cultural Revolution remains shrouded in mystery, with many deaths unreported or concealed to avoid another failure for Mao. This deadly experiment came to an end with Mao's death in 1976, leaving behind a legacy of uncertainty and tragedy. Before delving into the Cultural Revolution, let's explore the compelling beginnings of communist China. Mao's communists emerged victorious after a fierce 20-year civil war against Chiang Kai-shek's nationalists. During the 10-year Cultural Revolution, even simple acts like drinking tea or listening to classical music were deemed bourgeois and were violently suppressed. Thousands of records featuring classical music were destroyed, and squads of radicalized youths forcibly expelled patrons from tea houses. During the Cultural Revolution, the campaign to eradicate everything old extended to temples, monuments, libraries, and even beautiful gardens, with furniture and greenery destroyed in the pursuit of eradicating bourgeois influence. During the Cultural Revolution, known as the Ten-Year Decade, extreme measures were taken, such as banning chess and changing traffic lights to red to align with communist ideology. Economic progress was reversed, and China endured a period of terror where citizens acted as judges and jailers without the need for official policing. The collective madness persisted until 1976, the year of Mao's death. Ironically, Deng Xiaoping returned to power in 1978 and spearheaded China's economic transformation, earning the title of architect of modern China. One wonders where China would be had Mao's economic reforms of the 1960s not been derailed by the Cultural Revolution. Mao's life serves as a stark reminder of the tragic consequences of political and ideological fanaticism, highlighting the importance of defending political systems that uphold human rights and freedom of enterprise. It was a time of intense political fervor and ideological control, a period that continues to shape China and its people even today. The Little Red Book, a key instrument of Mao's cultural revolution, captivated Western democracies with its collection of quotes and ideas from the Chinese leader. This book, officially titled Quotations from Chairman Mao Zedong, was a compilation of Mao's speeches and writings. It was designed to be easily carried and referenced, making it a constant companion for millions during the Cultural Revolution. The book served as a tool for indoctrination, embedding Mao's ideologies deep into the psyche of the Chinese people. With over 900 million copies printed, mostly during the 60s and 70s, it ranks as the second most published work in the world after the Bible. This phenomenon highlights the profound impact of a small book in enchanting nations and influencing global political landscapes. In the 1980s, Jean-Francois dismissed Mao's Little Red Book as mere trivialities, yet a modern reassessment reveals its simplicity and triteness. Despite this, its historical influence is profound, having once fascinated millions globally and even guiding atrocities in Cambodia and Peru. This paradox highlights the book's complex legacy of captivating and inspiring actions worldwide. The mystery surrounding the Chinese Revolution is partly due to China's historical secrecy, reminiscent of modern North Korea's isolation. Despite opening up through capitalism, China's internal realities, such as the economic exploitation of its Muslim minority, leading to a diplomatic boycott of the 22 Winter Olympics by the US and others, remain obscured. 
This story unveils the ongoing struggle for transparency in a nation where the truth often lies hidden in the shadows. China denies the allegations, asserting their falsehood, but the veil of secrecy prevents any independent verification. This situation sets the stage for a compelling mystery where the quest for truth is hindered by restricted access and investigation. Enthralled by Mao's charisma and driven by a fervent zeal, indoctrinated students organize themselves into the Red Guards to enact their own agendas. Mao's speeches and writings became compulsory study material across all levels of education in China. With excerpts from the Little Red Book, becoming revered as the sacred texts of Chinese communism. All Chinese civil and military officials were mandated to carry the Little Red Book at all times, with forgetting it leading to potential humiliation and reprimand. How did Mao manage to maintain control without a fearsome political police? After the war, Chiang Kai-shek retreated to Taiwan, founding the Republic of China, while Mao declared the People's Republic of China in 1949, covering a vast mainland territory. This division signaled the start of two distinct paths in Chinese history. Witness the ongoing geopolitical drama between China and Taiwan as we delve into the historical backdrop. China considers Taiwan a rebellious province, reserving the right to reclaim it, even through non-peaceful means. Meanwhile, Mao's mid-20th century actions brought an end to the Qing dynasty the last of 13 monarchies ruling over China for over 4,000 years. Just the mere act of toppling four millennia of imperial tradition would secure Mao's place in the annals of time. The fall of the Ming Dynasty in 1912, after nearly 300 years of rule, shattered the nation into provinces controlled by feudal lords and engulfed in conflict. Join us as we unravel the gripping tale of Mao's ascent against this backdrop of upheaval and transformation. During the Civil War, the Kuomintang pursued reunification while the Communist Party aimed to assert its ideology. Despite briefly joining forces against Japan during World War II, once Japan was defeated, Chiang Kai-shek and Mao resumed their rivalry until the Communist leader's triumph. The first stage of the Chinese Revolution involved agrarian collectivization to socialize the predominantly agricultural economy. Simultaneously, purges targeted Kuomintang members and dissenters of the communist regime. His approach to leadership, while controversial, left an indelible mark on China, influencing the course of its history and shaping the nation we see today. The aftermath extended into the mid-1970s, with the collapse of poorly constructed dams during Typhoon Nina in 1975, resulting in the destruction of millions of homes and a surprisingly low death toll of 240,000. In 2005, Discovery Channel labeled the collapse of Chinese dams as the worst technological disaster ever, surpassing even Chernobyl. Following the Great Leap Forward's failure, Mao Zedong's power diminished, and party leaders redirected him to ceremonial and cultural duties alongside his fourth wife, Jiang Qing, also known as Madame Mao. Mao's role became symbolic, revered in propaganda, but removed from economic decisions due to his evident incompetence. Deng Xiaoping and Zhou Enlai worked pragmatically to manage the aftermath of Mao's leadership, but Mao resisted relinquishing power and saw Zhou Enlai's Moscow approach as a betrayal of Chinese revolutionary ideals. Realizing the growing support for Deng's policies among the Chinese people, Mao understood that his power was slipping, despite his cult of personality. With backing from loyal allies like Defense Minister Lin Biao and his influential wife Jiang Qing, Mao staged a comeback in 1966, launching the Cultural Revolution. Upon his return at 72, Mao promptly accused the Chinese government and society of being infiltrated by bourgeois elements intent on undermining the revolution and reinstating capitalism. While Deng Xiaoping focused on pragmatic economic reforms to revitalize the country, China simultaneously took an opposing ideological, educational, and cultural path. Madame Mao seized control of all cultural domains, infusing them with ideology, while Mao's adversaries in the political bureau suspected that behind their cultural diatribes lay the ambition for a return to power. During Mao's absence on a trip to rural China, the Communist Party leadership passed a resolution to prevent political discussions from resulting in persecutions. Mao vehemently opposed this resolution, pressuring his allies to revoke it, 
and asserting that dissenters and their ideas could be eradicated. Since mid-1966, propaganda outlets like the People's Daily relentlessly promoted the return of the great helmsman to power. His speeches were broadcasted through loudspeakers in areas with large crowds. Mao mobilized students as his main force to wage war within the Communist Party, urging them to eradicate old culture and bourgeoisie elements within the teaching profession, including school teachers and university professors. In the summer of 1966, university students took control of their campuses, and professors deemed insufficiently communist were subjected to summary trials. Under Mao's leadership, fanatical students effectively formed a parallel political government, as no official leaders or security forces dared to oppose the supreme leader's directives. Experienced professors, some with long-standing commitment to communism, saw their careers ended over trivial accusations perceived as signs of capitalist or bourgeois tendencies by uncompromising judges and executioners. The youth-led hunt for adults, initiated in schools and rural areas, expanded beyond these boundaries. Mao advocated destroying anything deemed old to pave the way for genuine communism, even if it required severing familial and friendly ties. The sole allegiance deemed valid was to the revolution and Mao as its foremost symbol. Mao was regarded as the universal father figure, and even biological or emotional parental bonds could be forsaken for the sake of the revolution's advancement. Mao's legacy, a blend of power, tragedy, and transformation, continues to reverberate through the annals of history. The video concluded by encouraging viewers to engage with the content by leaving comments, liking the video, and sharing it with friends and family. It also invited new viewers to subscribe to the channel for future updates.